Please remember that the complete information for the class that you are about to view is at elithecomputerguy.com. Not only do we have our videos there, but we have part lists, diagrams, pictures, and even complete code examples. So if you are watching this video and you want more information, please go to elithecomputerguy.com. Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and in today's class, we're going to be creating a pie hole with our Raspberry Pi. So what a pie hole is, it is a security device that allows you to block DNS name resolution, specifically for advertiser networks. So whenever you go to a website, whether it's Facebook.com or CNN.com or ArsTechnica.com, when you go there and you see all of the banner ads, all of those banner ads are presented to you uh, by the website making calls to specific ad networks or domains name so adnetwork.google.com or adnetwork. You know, evil, evil advertising syndicate.com, so on and so forth. And so basically, what the pie hole allows you to do is you are able to use the pie hole as the DNS for your network. So you can configure all or some of your computers to use the pie hole as the DNS. And then when your computer tries to resolve names uh, for domains that are in advertising networks, essentially what the pie hole will do is it'll just sync those domain names. So instead of actually resolving, to the full-fledged IP addresses like it's supposed to do or like DNS is supposed to do what the pie hole does is it says oh this is a restricted domain again it's an advertising domain so instead of actually resolving presenting an IP address so that the computer can then pull the banner ad or the pop-up ad or whatever else from the server what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to fail that resolution so therefore the advertising will not show up on the client computers so when you look at the pie hole basically what this is is this is a DNS so security device and so what it does is when your computer tries to resolve a domain name so cnn.com or adnetwork.google.com to an IP address basically what it does is it goes through and it says okay this this uh, domain name is okay, so I'll resolve the, the IP address. So CNN.com itself, that IP address will, will resolve. But again, adnetwork.google.com, oh, that is in our blacklist, that's in our restricted list, so we are not actually going to resolve that. So the computer will then not be able to pull the banner ads, the pop-up ads, all of that kind of stuff. So today, I'm going to show you how to build a pie hole. It's a relatively simple process uh, and is something that you'll probably be very happy to have on your network. So there are a few warning warnings for today. There's one a technical warning warning, there's one professional warning warning, and then there's one don't be a dummy warning warning. If you do the final one, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna find you, and I'm gonna be very, very snarky at you. But anyways, the first warning warning I would say from a technical standpoint is that if you are going to be using a Raspberry Pi for your pie hole, then you only use it for your pie hole. Basically, if you're going to be using a Raspberry Pi to be your pie hole, that it should be a dedicated little device. So a lot of times people really want to uh, add multiple things onto a single device or a single server. So you may want to use the Raspberry Pi as a Pi hole and maybe a web server and maybe a file server and maybe a couple of other things. One of the things that I will tell you is you may run into conflicts, you may run into problems if you try to have multiple services on your Raspberry Pi, especially if you do not know enough to troubleshoot those problems. So I would argue with the Raspberry Pi and a Pi Hole, just buy an inexpensive Raspberry Pi, install the Pi Hole onto it, and then just leave it in a corner. Leave it in a corner, update it every once in a while, and otherwise uh, don't mess with it. The next thing that I uh, want to talk about is from a professional standpoint, or from like an infrastructure standpoint to be thinking about how do you actually really want to be using the pie hole. Now how they suggest you use the pie hole is not how I would recommend you using the pie hole at least in the beginning. So it's important to understand that with the pie hole, the pie hole can actually be a full-fledged DHCP server and it can act as the primary DNS for your local area network. So what you can do is if you have a router, you can turn the DHCP and the D DNS off on your router and then on the pie hole, you can turn the DHCP on, you can create your subnet masks, you then make the DNS the pie hole itself, and then you make the default gateway, whatever the router is, and now uh, your little pie hole is then providing all the DHC DHCP services for your local area network, and is then presenting itself as the DNS for the local area network, and again, it's presenting the router as your default gateway. I would be careful about doing this initially, because if you do this, and you're not really comfortable with what's going on here, you're not really comfortable with networking, 
you're making a primary device for your network. You're making your main DHCP server for the network be this little pie hole. And if you don't really understand how subnet masks work, and you don't really understand how a couple of other things work, you literally could basically shut your entire uh, your network off of the internet. So I would be very careful with that. Uh, one of the things that you can do is you can set up your pie hole and basically it's a DNS server. And then one of the things that you can do is you can simply then point individual clients uh, to that pie hole as being the primary DNS server. So you can go into the manual configurations. I'll show you that today. And instead of using the, the, uh, the pie hole as the full DACP server, you can simply set it up as DNS and then connect your clients, your individual clients to that DNS server, having them be a primary, uh, the primary DNS for that particular computer. And so that way you can play around with this. You can make sure it works. Some, some computers can be using it for DNS. Other computers cannot be using it for DNS. And basically that way, especially when you're in the, the troubleshooting playing around phase, you don't have to worry about shutting your entire network down again, especially I know a lot of my viewers are young. Maybe you're, you're setting this up up on the uh, your home network, say the network that your mother, your father, your sisters, your brothers, all of these people are using. Let me just say, if you set up the pie hole as a DACP server and you're really not sure what you're doing, <laughs> your family's not gonna be happy with you. So in the beginning, at least, do not set it up as a DHCP server, simply set it up as a standard DNS server. I'll show you how to do that. And then manually configure your computers to use it for DNS and then go from there. And then once you feel completely comfortable, then you can deal with a larger network. The final thing, uh, the final warning that I'll give you is the don't be a dummy dummy warning, is that a lot of people, when they look at security, they're always looking for that one security device, right? I want to plug this one device into my network and I want my network to be secure. That's not how security works in the real world. <laughs> not how security works, right? Security is a multi-tiered, uh, multi-layered affair. You have multiple devices, you have multiple pieces of software, you have multiple configurations. All of these things create a secure environment. So one of the things you do need to be thinking about uh, when you're using something like the Pi Hole is remember, it's doing DNS resolution and basically it's doing DNS security. So if you try to resolve adnetwork.google.com uh, to an IP address, it'll sync that. So instead of actually resolving to the IP address it should, it will just fail it out. But remember, remember, that's DNS resolution. If for some reason the ad network that's being presented is simply present, being presented with an IP address, so you're already getting the IP address, you don't actually need the DNS resolution, then any ads being presented by simply an IP address, that will sail on through. Because remember, what the pie hole is doing is it's dealing with DNS security. And so DNS is resolving domain names to IP addresses. If the server, if the website that you're going to is already presenting you with an IP address, then you're going to skip that DNS resolution process because you don't actually need it to work. And therefore things like banner ads and that kind of stuff will pop up. So this is one of those things that you have to be thinking about in the real security world. Again, with all security devices and software and all that kind of thing, they try to solve specific problems and they try to solve like the biggest problems, uh, but there are ways to slip past these types of things. And so you just have to be careful about that. So if you're sitting there and you, you set up the pie hole and you have all the blacklists up there and everything's, you know, everything seems like it should be configured. And then for some reason, when people go to particular websites, they're still getting banner ads, they're still getting pop-ups. You're like, why is this happening? Why that might be happening is basically they're getting pointed directly to IP addresses instead of having DNS resolution and therefore the pie hole is basically just uh, just gone around and it's not worried about. So these are some things uh, to be thinking about. Um, again, with all these types of devices, be very careful when you set it up on your network. Again, especially if this is your home network or if you have roommates or anything else, this is the type of device that can take over services for the entire network. And if it's set up properly, that can be a good thing. Uh, but if you screw something <laughs> If you screw something up, it can be very, very bad. Again, if you just simply fat finger where the default gateway is, you know, instead of 192.168.1.1 is what the default gateway might might, might supposed to be, uh, you know, if you do 192.16.1.1, now all of a sudden, 
every computer on the network that grabs a DHCP address from your Pi hole is now going to have the wrong default gateway, which means none of the computers that have grabbed an IP address uh, will be able to get out on get out onto the internet. So be very, very, very careful with that. So with that, let's go over to the demo computer. Um, I'll just show you the website, which has the information for the Pi Hole. Then we'll actually go over to the Raspberry Pi itself and we'll set up the Pi Hole and show you how all of this works. So here we are at my demo computer and I've just simply gone to pi-hole.net and this brings you to the Pi Hole website. You can scroll through here, it has a bit of information for you. Uh, one of the things to realize is that you do not have to simply install this onto a Raspberry Pi. Since it's called a Pi Hole, a lot of people assume it'll only work on a Raspberry Pi, but basically this is essentially Linux software and so it will work on the Raspberry Pi OS, it'll work on Ubuntu, it'll work on Debian, it'll work on Fedora, and it will work on Cinema. OS. The reason that you would probably want to use it on a Raspberry Pi is if you're having this be on 24 hours a day, using a normal desktop computer and, and basically burning all of the electricity that a normal desktop computer needs uh, in order to simply provide some very low level DNS services is going to cost you a lot of electricity at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the year. So again, you think about a normal desktop computer, you have that on 24 hours, uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, um, and all of that's providing is low level level DNS services, that's going to end up costing a little bit of electricity. So by putting onto a Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi is a low uh, energy uh, type device, so it will cost a lot less than electricity. So that's kind of one of those things just to, to kind of keep in mind. You're like, oh, I don't want to use a Raspberry Pi. I'm going to I'm gonna put this in my, you know, three, three power supply RAID configured whatever server. It's like, well, that's that's a good way to waste a lot of electricity. So uh, just something to keep in mind. So you can set this up again. And you can also do things like set the Raspberry Pi up uh, in a VPS, in a, in a virtual server. So on, uh, let's say, DigitalOcean or Linode or something like that. So if you actually wanted to have the... the uh, the uh, Pi hole up on the cloud and be able to access it that way, that is also something that you can do. So the, so we're going to put this on the Pi. The standard place to put this is on the Pi, but you don't have to put it on the Pi, if that makes any sense. So anyway, so we go through and we can go down here and see some of the different information. Uh, and then we can go to install the Pi hole. So we're gonna go and click on install the Pi hole and it will give you some different ways to install the Pi hole. The way that we are actually going to be installing today is simply the manual uh, way for installing, method two, the manual way, uh, wget uh, space hyphen o, basic install, blah, blah, blah. So basically we're going to uh, plug this into the terminal. This will install the Pi hole uh, for us and away we can go. So with that, let's go over to the Raspberry Pi itself and actually install uh, the Pi hole onto it. Okay, okay. so here we are, my Raspberry Pi. We're simply going to go up here. We're going to click on the terminal to open up the terminal and then we are going to type in the commands. Very simple. So wget uh, space hyphen uppercase O. So to be clear, to be clear, it is not zero. It is not lowercase o, it is uppercase o. So, you know, that's one of those nice arguments they put in there and you're like, crap, what the, is it a zero or is it an o? It is an uppercase o, just so you know. We're then just going to type in basic hyphen install dot sh. Uh, then we're going to do space https colon forward slash forward slash uh, install uh, dot pi hyphen hole dot net and hopefully that will go through if I didn't fat finger anything so it went through and it basically extracted itself all of that stuff is good and so now what we're going to do is we're simply going to do sudo bash uh, basic hyphen install uh, dot sh and this will now actually install the raspberry pi we get the little raspberry pi symbol here uh, and it'll take a second. So it's not locked up. It hasn't frozen. Uh, it's just, you know, it's checking the disk space, updated the local cache, uh, checking for app git, so on and so forth. This installer will transform your device into a network-wide ad blocker. Okay. Pi hole is free. Blah, blah. Okay. Pi hole is a server, so it needs a static IP address. Okay. Uh, then it says basically what uh, Ethernet uh, connection you want to use. So F0 is your wired connection. Uh, connection. WLAN0 is your wireless connection. I would, I would say just stick with the uh, hardwired connection. 
uh, then it says your upstream DNS providers. So, uh, so these are the DNS providers like up on the internet. So you can use Google, you can use Level 3, Komodo, Cloudflare, Custom. So basically, uh, we're just going to use Google to make our lives easier. So I think this is 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 .8 .8 and 8.8.8. No, 8.8.4.4. Um, so these are basically Google's DNS servers. We'll click OK. Uh, and then basically, in order to block the ads, to be able to sync to the uh, DNS resolution, figure out what DNS is good and what, what domain names are bad, it uses third-party lists. So it says, do you want to use these particular lists or not? We're just going to uh, tab down and say OK. So we want to use all of these lists. Uh, select the protocols that you want to block. Um, so IPv4 and IPv6 is fine. Uh, we're just using IPv4 really, but yeah, whatever. Uh, and then it's going to say what your current network settings are. So we can say here that my uh, my IP address, this is what I actually grabbed from my DHCP server, is 192.168.1.23 with a class C subnet. Uh, so a, a slash 24 is a class C subnet, 255.255.255.0, uh, and the gateway is 192.168.1.1. So what we're going to do here is I am just going to uh, basically uh, manually change this and I'm going to say five. So what I want to do is I want to have the D, the IP address for the pie hole is going to be 192.168.1.5 and I'm going to leave it as a slash 24. Uh, so don't don't screw with the slash, don't screw with the 24, just just modify just modify that number right there. Uh, then I'm gonna oops click OK. Okay, enter your desired default gateway. So we're just going to keep it at 192.168.1.1. Going to click OK. So is this correct? Yes. Uh, do you wish to install the web admin interface? So yes, I want a nice little web admin interface. Uh, do you wish to install the web server? So again, now this is a, a clean installation of a Raspberry Pi OS. So I don't have a patch on here. I do not have any other web servers on here. So we might as well have the uh, light uh, HTTPD uh, server installed. So we're simply going to install this. This is a web server for us. Uh, do you want to log queries? Yes, we want to actually log things. Uh, select a privacy uh, mode. So do you want to show everything? Do you want to hide domains, hide domains and clients, blah, blah, blah. I want to show everything. But to be clear, this is something that you should be thinking about with the security policies for your organization. So if you are setting this up for an organization, so if you're setting it up for yourself, just log everything, <laughs> log everything. You're setting it up from your home. Hey, log everything. See, see what your brother's looking at. Uh, but to be clear, if you are setting this up for an organization, you do need to know what the privacy policies are for the organization to determine what you should actually log. You don't want to get yourself into legal trouble because you're logging everything and then people think that's spying and stuff goes to hell. So anyways, you decide how much you want to basic, basically be able to log. Uh, and then we're going to click OK. It's going to go through here. It's going to figure, finish configuring everything. Um, and you know, this just takes a couple of seconds. So the nice thing with the pie hole is if you're not explaining it to somebody, if you're just going through and actually setting it up, you can literally have the pie hole like completely set up in just a few minutes. It really doesn't take that long. Uh, so this is going through, it's doing a little cleanup, creating the configure file here. So you can, you, again, you can see it's using PHP. So just something to think about. It's going through, creating the configs. And now we're finished. So basically we can see here, our IP address is 192.168.1.5. Uh, we can come down uh, in order to connect to the admin interface. We will go to HTTP 192.168.1.5. So basically if you go to one of the client computers on your network, you're able to access the interface for the pie hole there. And then this right here is the, the password. So make sure you don't lose this. So we're just gonna sit, do this copy. I'm going to go over here, go to accessories, go to text editor. I will then uh, paste and then I'll do file, save as, and you know how security 
kind of like your SIM, I would just save it as the password. Uh, so again, that is one of those important, stupid things. If you know, a lot of times when you go through and you're installing, you're installing something, you just do okay, 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 okay. Before you hit the okay, make sure you actually grab this uh, password here or you're gonna be locked out of the system and you're gonna have to go through the installation process again. Uh, so past that, we're just going to simply do okay and we can see installation is complete and now I can close out of the terminal. Uh, if I wanna go and I wanna actually access the web admin panel from the Raspberry Pi, I can simply go up here, open up the, uh, the web browser close that and basically uh, oops well uh, sorry open up the web browser don't close everything don't close all the tabs and then from here what I can do is I can do 1 point, I can do uh, 127.0.0.1 so this is called the loop back address then I can do admin and this will get me to the dashboard for the pie hole itself so I'm on the pie hole and simply by going to 127.0.0.1 forward slash admin I can see I can see the dashboard from here I can do login so if I click on login I can then come down to this password and then I will simply paste the password I have from this text file here uh, and then I will log in once you've done that, uh, we'll do never, and we can just go and can take a little bit of a look around. So the total queries, so how many queries have been done to the pie hole? We see that none have been done so far. We don't have it configured. Queries blocked, percent block, domains on block list. There's 84,000 domains on the black li uh, block list. We can go through here, there's query, there's logs. There's long-term data, so it can show you uh, graphics, that type of thing. You can create a whitelist, so if for some reason um, a, a domain name is being blocked when you don't want it to be blocked, so maybe you do want some kind of ad network to show up, or for some reason it's in a block list, you can actually whitelist domains here. One of the interesting things is they also have a blacklist, and so on this blacklist, you can add other domains. So again, if this is for your organization, if this is for your business, you may not want your uh, your users going to youtube.com right so again th this is a dns security device so by default it syncs uh dns queries uh, that try to pull in uh, stuff from ad networks but you can also block any other domain name resolution so you could put in youtube you could put in facebook you could put in I don't know, linkedin right so you could actually plug in uh, domains here and then block them and basically any computer that is using this pie hole for the dns it will then sync and won't actually be able to get to that domain name uh, when we do the wildcard here what the wildcard does is it also blocks the subdomain so if you had like mobile.youtube.com so if somebody went to youtube.com and the wild card wasn't selected, um, then that would be blocked. But if somebody might, might have gone to mobile.youtube.com, if you don't use this wild card, they might actually be able to get through. So you have the blacklist here. That's, a, that's an interesting thing. They have group management, so you can actually create groups, you know, clients, and be able uh, to set up different configurations there. Shows you some different tools, shows you the, the network, shows you the, the different computers uh, that it can see on the network. So we can see 192.168.1.1.14.12.7, so on and so forth. And so this gives you some interesting things to take a look at and play around with. Now, if we go down here to settings, this is where you can actually set up that DA HCP service if you want. So here we can see the basic network information. So 192.168.01.5 with a slash 24. We can see what the host name is. So for some reason you forgot what the hell the host name is for the for the uh, the pie hole, or if you're running into problems. So again, if you're using a Raspberry Pi and you just leave the host name as the default, you might do some weird name resolutions on your network. And if you have multiple computers named the exact same thing, you might run into issues. So this will just show you what your host name is. You might need to go in and modify that uh, shows you um, when the pie hole was started it shows you some other information here shows us some block lists we can deal with DNS so basically this is the upstream DNS servers so if you're trying to get to CNN.com or basically you know google.com or anything like that what upstream DNS servers will you use so we're using Google's upstream DNS servers 
This is the DHCP server. So we can enable the DHCP server. Now it's very important, very important. If you enable the DHCP server on your Pi Hole, you need to turn off the DHCP server on your router. So whatever is currently acting as a DHCP server, you need to turn it off and then you turn on the DHCP server on the Pi Hole. If you have two DHCP servers running at the exact same time, ha ha! That is, that, is, uh, that is fun in all the wrong ways. <laughs> You're going to have a lot of fun troubleshooting all of the issues. So remember, only one DHCP server at a time. Uh, range of IP addresses to hand out. So basically, this is the scope. So you can see here, this is handing out from 192.168.1.201 up to .251. So if that's what you want to do, what the default gateway is, 192.168.1.1, uh, the pie hole domain name, some of this other stuff, basically the lease time here, and there's some other information here. So basically, this is what you would set up if you want the pie hole to then be your DHCP server, and this would then provide the IP IP addresses, the DNS uh, name, and the default gateway uh, number uh, to all the clients that are connecting on your network. Then you got some other stuff here, so some web API uh, things if you want to play around with that. You got the privacy, again, DNS resolver privacy level. Uh, so what we have is now is show everything and record everything, gives maximum amount of statistics, but then you have these different levels. And so what you do here is based off of your particular organization. If your organization has particular privacy policies, then you make sure that this goes with those particular privacy policies. And then we have teleporter over here. Basically all this is is this is an import export uh, utility for the Pi hole uh, so if you want to switch to an another device let's say and so you want to export your Pi hole settings you can export the settings here or if you want to then import the, pi the Pi hole settings into another device you can then choose the file and import you doing that um, I want I do wonder how much you would actually use this type of thing but the pet teleporter does exist so this is basically the overview of what the Pi hole looks like so let's go back over to my demonstration computer and I can show you how to configure the DNS so that we start using the pie hole for the DNS and I can show you what it looks like once you started using the pie hole for the DNS. So here we are back at my demonstration computer. So again, this is a MacBook Pro running Mac OS. I'm using the Safari browser. But to be clear, DNS and web browsers, at least when, when dealing with the Pi Hole, are essentially the same. So if you're using Windows with Edge or Firefox or whatever else, using the Pi Hole will still block that DNS resolution to the ad networks, the same as if you're using a MacBook Pro. So let's go up here. And uh, currently, uh, my DNS is being resolved by the router on my network, so 192.168.1.1. That's my default gateway and my uh, and my DNS. Uh, so if I go to CNN.com currently uh, using Safari, we can see that a whole bunch of ads will show up. Uh, so we can see that we got a nice little uh, banner ad up here with Don Lemon. If we come down here, we can pearl cozy shoes. We got some mask advertisement, all of that kind of thing. So not only are ads showing up, but tracking is happening. All kinds of things are occurring when these types of banner ads uh, show up on a website and so we want to block those ads from happening so that we don't have to see them. So what we're going to do here is we're going to quit Safari and then we're going to simply go up, we're going to go to open network preferences and then we are going to modify the DNS server, the primary DNS for this particular computer. So again if you're in the Windows world or the Linux world it'll be slightly different but hopefully if you're watching this class you know how to change your primary DNS server. We're simply going to go to advanced, we're going to simply click on DNS and then for me I'm going to do 192.168.1.5 so that is the DNS server that's the uh, the Pi hole the DNS server the Pi hole that we created I'm gonna hit plus so that's there then I'm going to do OK then I'm going to do apply and then I'm going to close out of the system preferences. And so now 192.168.1.5 is the DNS server for this particular computer. So when it goes to CNN.com or any other website, basically those most of those ads should not show up. Now, one of the things I'm going to do next, you can't really see this, but maybe you can hear it. I'm going to unplug my network cable just so things get flushed out and then re-plug my network cable. So if you heard that click, I was re-plugging in the network cable. One of the issues you can run into is do remember your computer caches certain types of information such as DNS resolution. 
And so if you don't restart your computer or reset the network card or possibly unplug the network card, the network cable and plug it back in, when you go back to use your web browser, it may have DNS resolution uh, information already cached. And so it may appear that your Pi Hole isn't working. And it's not that your Pi Hole isn't working, it's that your web browser has cached certain information. So disable, re-enable your card, uh, basically disable, re-enable Wi-Fi, unplug the network cable, do something to make sure and try to clear out that cache. Uh, so from here, we can simply go to Safari. Uh, we see this pops up. Again, it looks normal now, but if we go to, let's say, CNN.com, we can now see that CNN.com is going to look different for us. So we can see that there is no big banner ad at the top. If we scroll down, this is, this is the space where the ads were before. So this is where banner ads are showing up. This is where tracking things were occurring, so on and so forth. And basically, you can go, as, you, as you go through, you can see that there's a lot of blank spots here. And those are the spots where there would be advertising. And that is now simply being blocked because of the, uh, of the, uh, the pie hole. But but one of the things I will show you is again, the pie hole is not a perfect solution for things like advertising. So you can see this lending tree ad right here. So this is getting through the pie hole system. So to be clear, using a pie hole will get rid of a, a lot of issues. It won't get rid of all of the issues though. So with that, let's go back to the pie hole and actually take a look at uh, what the charts look like, what the stats look like now that we're actually using the pie hole, just so you get an idea of that. So here we are back at our pie hole, our little Raspberry Pi, and we can start to see that it's doing its work. So total queries, we can see we have two clients. Uh, we can see the number of queries blocked, 199. Uh, percentage blocked, 57.3, so on and so forth. And you can come through here and you can start to get an idea of what's being blocked and basically what domains your computers are trying to access. So top permitted domains, we can see we have apple.com here. We can have the, the api.apple cloud kit here. So we can see this going on, google.com and cnn.com. So again, this might be useful for you if your employees, <laughs> if your employees don't seem to be as productive as they should be, if you come here and you see that YouTube has you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of hits, maybe you might want to think about blacklisting it. Uh, again, top blocked domains. So we can take a look here. We can see data.cnn.com is blocked. We can see adservice.google.com is blocked. Amazon ad system is blocked. So we can see, like literally, literally, I, I only set this up and went to CNN.com. That's it. And we can already see how many uh, domains are actually being blocked from this. Uh, you can click on the domain. You can see some different inf inf uh, information here. So things like the client. So if you look at a domain, and maybe it looks like a porn domain or something, you can click on it, and then you can see what clients are going to it. If everybody's going to it, then you probably know it's just a general thing that's out there. If only one of your client computers are trying to access that domain, then it may be a problem. Uh, so you can come here, you can take a look at it. If you want to click on the whitelist, so you can actually whitelist um, that if you know if they, there's like a domain that you realize, oh, somebody actually needs to be able to access it, they can you can click on the whitelist there. Uh, past that, we can go up here to the query log. And so with the query log, this will show us in more or less real time uh, what's going on with the DNS. So domain, uh, uh, time hyphen uh, Mac OS, apple.com, 192.168.1.1. We can see the status is okay. So it actually went through. Um, if for some reason I wanted to blacklist this, so again, maybe it's YouTube or Facebook or something specific, I could actually click on the blacklist here. Uh, then data.cnn.com. Again, we can see what IP address is, going, is accessing that. We can see that this is blocked if I wanted to whitelist this. So again, let's say for some reason um, I wanted people to go to that domain name, I could actually whitelist that there. And basically you can just simply scroll through here. You can see all that there's numerous different pages. We can click on the search. So let's say CNN. So if we wanted to see just stuff that has to do with CNN, we can see that type of thing here. And basically you can get a little bit better idea of what's going on with the DNS. We can come down here to the long-term data. So again, this can store data for a long time. We can click the uh, the range. So this has only been set up for today. So I can click on today. And then I can start to get a, a graphical idea of what's happening here, right? So uh, permitted DNS queries 35, blocked DNS queries 50. I can go to the query log. 
same type of thing. I'll click on today since I only have information for today. And then again, I'm saying the same type of information down here. I can blacklist, I can whitelist if I want. I can say, you know, what I want to see, what was forwarded, uh, what was cached, you know, blacklist, that type of thing. And then we can come down here to the top list and we get a better idea of, again, the top domains that people are accessing and that are being blocked, right? So top domains. Uh, we can see, you know, apple.com is a big one, uh, google.com, cnn.com, Twitter. Again, that TCO, that, that's kind of curious because I definitely did not try to go there. Uh, and then the top block domains, we see this over here. And then we can see the top clients. So we can see basically who's most active using the DNS. And as we can see here, it's 192.168.1.21, which is my client computer. So this basically gives you a bit of an overview of what the pie hole will do for you. Again, it can be a very valuable tool as a part of your security infrastructure. It's not the only thing you need for your security infrastructure. And do remember, if websites are using IP addresses instead of domain names, uh, it can go right past the the, uh, the pie hole because again there is no dns resolution if there's already an ip address so do realize that there are holes in the quote unquote security that this provides uh, but this may be very useful for your network in general for security and getting rid of advertisements and that type of thing so there you go now you know how to create a pie hole and you can try to protect your entire network from all of those nasty little advertisements and banner ads that show up. The nice part about this is this is not a browser extension that you have to install on all your computers. This isn't, again, some kind of software or whatever you have to install on all of your computers. Basically, this is DNS level blocking. So if you if you set it up so your client computers are using your pie hole as a DNS server, essentially all that happens is when, when, when IP addresses for those ad networks are requested, the pie hole will simply sync those requests and then the banner ads and all that stuff will not show up it's not it's it's not a panacea it does not fix all problems with tracking and ads and all that kind of stuff but especially if you have a network of 10 or more computers and you just want a nice simple baseline uh, DNS type security uh, apparatus I think this is a is a very valuable and a very useful thing to have now again in the real world you do need to decide whether or not you really want to set up your pie hole as your primary DHCP server for your network. So you can set up the pie hole as a DHCP server. You can set up your DHCP scope. You can, it obviously will provide itself as the DNS, the primary DNS, uh, and then you can plug in the default gateway. Why, why I would be cautious about this is because do remember in the real world when you have a lot of people using a lot of different computers, right? The a domain that to you may seem horrible and evil and nasty and frustrating to somebody else might be very necessary. So again, you know, the frustrating thing about the real world, can we talk about the real world for a second? You know, you may have a secretary, again, things that have happened in the real world, you may have a secretary that has a lot of downtime, right? So th that, that person is hired to sit there and pick up the phone and talk with people when they come in the door. But the reality is the business might not be that busy. So a lot of the time they're kind of sitting there and they're kind of fiddling on the computer and doing other things simply because there's no other work to do. Well, those type of employees many times will get on online and they'll play a lot of stupid online games you know like little you know the tetrises of the world and the solitaire i don't know the candy crushes whatever the popular game is currently well a lot of those popular games they're they're essentially tracking apps you know what i'm saying is basically you go there and they show you banner ads and they track what you do and so you get to play the free the free game and they get to try to gobble up information about you well 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 you implement a pie hole onto a network where you have a couple of secretaries that spend most of their day doing something comparable to playing candy crush and all of a sudden they're no longer able to play candy crush you're going to have a lot of pissed off employees. So that's where I would say be very careful with how you actually implement a pie hole. A lot of new people are like, this is great. And then they'll implement it for the entire network. And they'll have, they'll have no idea why everybody is so angry with them. What? I'm protecting your privacy. So what I would suggest, unless you really know you want to do that with your environment, 
is really is simply really think about simply setting this up as a DNS server, then point your client computers to that DNS server manually, right? So the CEO's uh, computer will be pointed to that DNS server, and your computer will be pointed to that DNS server, and everybody, all the non-secretary, the warehouse workers, will be pointed to that DNS server. But then the secretaries or anybody else that may have a problem using the Pi Hole, they can be pointed just to the standard DNS server and go from there. So that's some of the kind of things that you have to think about. Also, if you have Active Directory on your network, right? If you have Active Directory, there's Active Directory DNS services. Be very careful with using a Pi Hole on a network with Active Directory. This is one of those things where this can start getting very, very confusing and very complicated and very quirky very quickly when you start doing DNS. So just, just kind of keep that in mind. Don't just throw this into your network and assume everything will work perfectly. Uh, you could run into some surprising problems. Again, like no joke with that Candy Crush thing. Oh, I have to tell you, I have killed CEO's computers. <laughs> I have wiped out CEO's computers and they have been less pissed off than when I have removed the ability for certain secretaries to essentially play Candy Crush. You want to see somebody lose their mind, see a secretary lose their ability to play Candy Crush. They will serve your head to you on a platter. So uh, again, what seems good from a security standpoint may not work so well in the real world. So be very, very, very careful with how you implement this. And then the final thing too, as I would say with the Raspberry Pi uh, and the Pi Hole is simply uh, basically use this as a dedicated network device. Don't install Pi Hole and run a web server and run file services and run other things off of your Raspberry Pi. Your Raspberry Pi is a $45 computer. Just, just give it one function. Just, just allow it to do one function. If you start having to, having the Pi Hole do, uh, perform other services for the network, again, you may genuinely run into issues. And if that's your DNS server and that starts having issues, that can then cause issues for the entire network. So this is one of those things. Set, set up, put, put the Pi Hole on a clean installation of Raspberry Pi OS or whatever OS you want to use. Configure it, set it up, and then just, you know what I'm saying, update it every month. Go back, check, check the logs every once in a while, update it every month, and otherwise, just let it, let it do its work. Just let it do its work. So, as always, I enjoy doing this class. Look forward to seeing the next one. If you like the content that I create, please think about going to elinethecomputerguy.com and becoming a member or donating. Please understand that all the educational videos are in front of the paywall. That includes the videos, that includes the notes, the diagrams, and the code example. All of that is freely available and in front of the paywall. But if you want to watch opinion videos or if you want to be able to comment, you do need to become a member. Membership is $5 a month or $60 a year and gives you access to those opinion videos and the ability uh, to comment. If you don't want to become a member, you just want to give a one-time uh, donation, there is also a donate button where you can do that. Please understand, in order to provide the education that I am, it does cost money. Servers cost money, equipment costs money, travel costs money. All of these things cost a reasonable amount of money. And the fact of the matter is, is YouTube's advertising program no longer supports creators the way that it used to. So if you want to these classes to continue to stick around and you find them to be valuable, please think about either becoming a monthly member or donating a few dollars for this project.